Here's where we're headed in this video. We're going to build those superb patterns. These patterns can be applied to 3D wall sculptures, building facade, and 3D printed products like lampstands, cups, and similar items. This project is inspired by Travis Finch's work. Let's get to know the different steps it takes to build those patterns. The very first step is to create base patterns, and the very first script we apply on top of this is tiling an appropriate hexagonal or grid pattern. From here, we're going to give it solid thickness, and we have control over the thickness based on some gradient or how far away the connection from attractors. We control the thickness from here, and then we will tile the border. One script that we build up in this video will help you generate an unlimited number of patterns. Let's take a look at our first step, which is creating the base pattern. Start by drawing a six-sided polygon. You can choose a rectangle or another pattern based on your tile. I'll set the radius to 30 units. The whole idea is to create a pattern inside this module. I'll simply create line connections from the center to the corners like this. Now the key to creating interesting results is to play around with moving the control points up and down. I'll move this point down and this one point up. Next, go to the top view and use the Rotate tool, making sure to enable the Copy option to True to make a copy. For later tiling purposes, the pattern needs to be able to tile into rectangular regions as well. So we have to split these curves into four quadrants by splitting at the midpoint of this hexagon. First, explode it, then rebuild it with a point count of 3 and degree 1. Explode it again, and this will separate the curve into two segments. The rest will be done in Grasshopper. Let's open up Grasshopper and continue to next step. First, we will reference those curves into Grasshopper using a curve container. Right-click and set multiple curves. Now, we will tile those patterns into a hexagonal pattern. To start, I'm going to drop down the hexagonal component. Here we have some smaller hexagonal cells. So to match the size, I will set it to 30. Now we can see that the pattern fits into one of the cells. To tile this pattern into each cell, we can set up our orient component. The curve goes to geometry, and for the target plane, we take the center of the cells. We can see here by connecting to the point container, meaning each curve will copy over to those points. Give the points to the target plane. Here we start to see something, but the pattern just disperses all over. What we want is to copy all together. To do so, I will graph the points, meaning those curves get one target point together on each copy. Now we can see the wireframe of our pattern. Our next step now is to take those wireframes and add thickness to them. Move the component over to get more space, and I'm going to drop multipipe. Plug the patterns into curves. We can add some thickness to be able to see clearly what we're doing. We could provide a custom preview and use a generic white material. Now we can control the thickness using node size. I will set 3 for the node size. If we zoom in here, we can see a black indent. The pipe we created is not fused into one. This is because the curve we got from the orient is not placed in the same groups or branches. To fix this, we can simply flatten it here. Now that we see our thickness working, we can move to the next step which is controlling the thickness based on some gradient field or attractor effect. So based on some point attractor, the pipe gets closer to the point, get a smaller node size and farther away, its maximum node size. So how do we tell this to multi-pipe to assign those sizes? Well, it needs two inputs, one for where the connection is located, size point, and based on these points, we assign one node size for each point. So this one value is set for all nodes, so I will remove it. First, let's set up this size points input. Expand here to get more space. To get each node location, we use a couple of components, endpoint merge and call duplicate. By merging start and endpoints, we could get all possible intersection points. Giving the pattern to this setup will give us points on each intersection. Since more than one curve intersects at the joints, this will surely have duplicate points. To get rid of unnecessary points, I will pass them through the call duplicate component. This reduces the number from 1200 to 308 points. Now we can give those points to size point. We can't see any change since we are not giving node size. Let's clean this up by grouping and renaming it to size points. Next, based on how far those points are from one attractor point, 
we set the node size. First, expand our setup to get more space. Here the idea is just to measure the distance of each point relative to one attractor point. Drop a point container and set one point. Now we measure the distance from this point to each size point we created. Giving those distance values will give us weird sub D. This is because those values are extremely big. In between here, we need to tone it down. For this, I will use a simple map range setup. The default value is 0 to 1, which is very small. We'll give it an external target domain of 3.0 to 0 0.17, meaning the further away from the attractor point, the node size will be closer to 0 0.17, and the closer they get, it becomes closer to 3.0. Here the gradient is all over the edge. I want to apply a certain portion of the pattern to be affected, meaning the nodes within a certain distance range will be affected, and the rest will get a constant size. After we measure distance, we will drop down the minimum. The distances above this threshold will get clamped. This way, we can control the influence range. This is our new setup. Let's group it and name it Node Size. Next, we are going to tile these patterns into a rectangular region. We will simply filter out the pattern inside some region and replace it with the previous setup. Double-click any wire to get rerouted and expand to get more space for the next step. Right-click on any input and press do EF, which will set the wire display to faint. Now from those curves, we will select out the curves inside some region. For this, I will use a rectangle. It's easy for selection if the size of the rectangle snaps to each joint. At the start, we set the radius to 30. A rectangle must be a multiple of this to make it snap to joints. I use multiplication and move to front, and those multiples will be the x and y size of the rectangle. Now, we select the curves lying inside this rectangle. For this, I will use the cull pattern component. Give the curves to the list input for selection pattern. We can determine this with a combination of curve middle and point and curve. First, we get the midpoint of each curve. Then, we test if this point is inside the rectangle or not, using curve inside component. This gives us values of 0, 1, and 2. 0 means outside. 1 means exactly on the same line as the rectangle. 2 means inside the curve. So this will be our selection pattern. Internally, it will convert to true and false values. By doing this, we will select the curves that are inside the rectangle. Clean up by grouping and renaming it to Select Inside Region. Now we can replace those newly filtered patterns. Here the pattern just ends to nothing. Our next step is to create a border so the end will fuse into some boundaries. In between our Select Inside Region and Multipipe, I will expand the setup. Here, we will work on the boundaries. We can simply extract the boundaries using the Bounding Rectangle component. Give the pattern to it. This gets us the boundary curve, but here the curve moves up and down, and this boundary curve does not intersect with it unless we project it onto the same plane. Here, we take the size points. They have different heights, which we can use to extract the plane where we project the rectangle. For this, we use a couple of components, deconstruct, create set, vector z, and x we plane. First, we have the z-coordinate of each point. If you take a look at the z-coordinate, there are only three unique values just repeating around. Using the create set component, we will extract those three unique values. Then, we turn them into z-vectors. Out of those vectors, we create an x y plane. This will create three different planes based on those z height differences. Now we can use the project component to project the boundary curve into each plane, rectangle to geometry, and those planes will be our target planes. Now the boundary curve will touch all possible endpoints. We can merge it with the previous pattern and feed it to multipipe, making sure to flatten it here. If we take a look at some joints in the connection area, we just created the boundaries, but they won't fuse into one sub B. This is because the boundaries form one complete curve. 
We need to break it for each intersection area. So in between merge and project, I will expand here to get more space. In between here, I will add a shatter component. Now, we need the parameter where to shatter it, which we can simply get from the curve curve intersection component. The first set of curves will be the patterns, and the second one will be the boundaries. I will graft it here so it keeps the boundary curve data structure intact. If we take a look at the data structure here, we have 1200 and here three branches, since we have three curves grafted. I will use trim tree to get back to three branches, and this will be our shattering parameters. This will fuse the end of each pattern to the border. This is our new setup. Clean up by grouping and rename it to border. Finally, I don't like those diagonal connections from top to bottom at each border. Sometimes it creates problems when applied to other patterns. To remove these connections, zoom over to the Select Inside Region setup. I will offset the rectangle. To offset inward, right-click here and go to Expression and add minus X. This will be our selection region, so all pattern edges that connect up and down will be removed. So let's see how you can use this script to apply on top of other patterns. I just modeled a couple of different patterns using a similar technique that I showed you at the start of this video. Now, to apply a different pattern, all we need to do is change the base curve pattern. Select your new pattern, right-click on the curve container, and select Set Multiple Curves. This gives us only half of the pattern because the source plane is set to the world XY plane. We want the plane at the center of the pattern. To fix this, we use the bounding box and volume component. First, get the bounding box, then use the centroid of the box as the source plane. This will resolve the problem. I just tested this out on different patterns, and it works fine. Here are some close-up renders I made using the script we built so far. If we want to push it even further by adding hard edges, separating modules for 3D printing, or applying it to various product designs, I've prepared four additional advanced lessons. You can access them on my Patreon page, along with this final script and all other project files, to show support for future tutorials. If you like this type of video's format, you definitely need to check out this one. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.